All my fellas. All my fellas. All, all my fellas. This video will cover chapter 14 of Media and Mass Communication Theory. Also, if you don't see me in class today, well, I'm tired. I was up late editing this, so, uh, yeah, and that's also why White Boy isn't here. We are very tired. So, let's get on with the video. What is audience theory? Why do we have to even know about research traditions? What is an audience? For many, you'd kind of think, oh, it's just people that watch your stuff or somehow receiving the information that you're transmitting, something like that. You know, something cool. Well, it's also in dispute. You'd kind of think, oh, we've we've been talking, we've been creating content, be it audiovisual or even just live content for millennia. But look, audience is a construct. I know it's like time or food or taxes. It's a construct or gender. I don't know. I want to... I. <sighs> but that's fine. Listen, it's more of an industry construct in media because it's just used to focus on this idea of audience making. You'd understand, and I don't think you don't understand because more than likely you do because you're smart, yes. And hello, everyone. But again, it's just used to specify who and how we sell to people. We specify and sell these groups of consumers to advertisers to make more money. I know. Let's not lie. They're all in it for the money. There's literally no other reason. It's just for the money. <clears throat> However, we we are basically oversaturated with this. I know. Have you been on TikTok, YouTube, X, uh, Facebook? Insert social media here. Well, I know, I know. Look, we both actively and inactively become oversaturated with media with the idea of being an audience member we don't have a choice because we are always an audience here here this guy will explain it a little bit better this episode looks at understanding the target audience looking closely at how and why companies define audiences so firstly why understand the audience Audience is important to a company or a media producer because they need to make sure their products are meeting the audience's needs. Knowing exactly who their audience is enables them to cater and adapt products for specific audiences, so give the audience exactly what they want, gain feedback about the success of a product from the right people, and find gaps in the market. So if I make a program about different modes of transport, if I really understand my audience, I might know that the people that watch this program are mainly interested in cars, so I can therefore give them programs catered to them. I might receive feedback that they want to know more about trains, so I can cater to that as well. I might also find that a small section of the audience likes bikes, but no one else is making programs on bikes, so I know that this is a gap in the market. So even though it might be a small audience, I can still do well from this program because no one else is doing it. So that's why companies need to understand the audience. But companies also need to know how to categorize and define their audience. So firstly, a couple of terms you might come across are mass audience and niche audience. This is fairly straightforward as a mass audience is a very large audience with a wide range of people. So BBC One has a mass audience. A niche audience is a more specific audience and usually fairly small, with a specific interest. Gabbit Media, this channel, 
would have a niche audience of people interested in learning about the media. And yes, it's very small. We can define an audience by a particular product. For example, the Sun newspaper audience. So people that read the Sun newspaper, you can probably think of a stereotypical person that might read the Sun. Of course, not everyone that reads the Sun is like this, but you can get a rough idea of the audience from the products they consume. Then you could define an audience by the type of product, so documentary watchers. You might consider people that watch documentaries to be well educated. Again, it's not necessarily the target audience for documentaries, but this can help us to define an audience through the type of product. Now more common ways of defining the audience and the ways that media companies do this is through what's known as demographic. It is autumn. No, I'm kidding. But we could easily have had this whole video just be, oh, we'll just be lazy and watch other people's shit on this. Sorry for cursing, professor. Uh, don't dock the greed. Um, here's a picture of white boy as a puppy. Look at him. Look at him. Yes, yes, look at the boy. Now, back to this. It's a lot of work. I'm not going to uh, edit together like hours upon hours of other people's stuff. Not my thing. Too much work. I don't care. But if it meant a good grade, maybe. But let's uh, tie back to the chapter. While working on this, myself and the other two members, we would look at the PowerPoint, the chapters and all that. It simplified it well, but uh, let's make everything a little bit more entertainment oriented. Like there are four concepts, especially when it comes to the idea of the quote unquote audience. And I like to make sure that people understand that such as audience as the people assembled, the people addressed as happening or as hearing or audition. It's kind of this weird little thing that is expanded upon, but you really want to understand from mass to market. I know human history, ew, you have to understand human history. The idea of an audience is just like mass society to audience as a market. It's always going to be the fact that audience will evolve and it'll continue to evolve as our platforms, our media, our forms of communication continue to change, evolve, and even adapt to new scenarios. And until recently, you want to know something? Audiences were just that, a viewer base. But now, especially recently, these are people that are potential consumers. I know it's so so wild but again they had similar values shared identities but now they are considered individuals as part of a larger group it's cynical i know modern day audiences are just basically objects in the eye of the corporate media elites don't worry i'm not i'm not um just hiding in like the corner of my apartment like <laughs> I'm not losing my mind. As cynical as it sounds, audiences are just objects. They're just able to be controlled and managed. It's really cynical. It's how media views us, how everything of that sort is going to be used. They believe the formation of different audiences is temporary. Most members of any audience these days are fully aware how companies view them and have their own desires they wish to fulfill, but it's honestly this weird, calculated, like, toxic relationship. Like, when you're... We we all know that person, and I, I feel like we are thinking of that one person now that's with that person, and they shit-talk them all the time. But then you're also looking at them being like, oh, no, 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 I would never shit talk them. But then they're shit talking each other behind each other's backs. But then at the end of the day, they just go home and go, ooh, they're kissing. Oh, and they're both boys. 
and they're fish. Ignore, ignore that part. But again, it's uh, it's it's a very mutually toxic relationship that the consumer holds with the media providers. Now, we do also want to know the goals. They have their goals. We have ours. The media's goals is measuring. And this is where the research, the research is part of it. It measures the actual and potential reach and audience choice behavior. Basically, like, look, how far can this go and what will the audience choose to do? And again, we always got to remember that these media providers are always going to be looking for the next best uh, audience to sell their product to. That, that's how it is. Then we get product testing, improving effectiveness, or like how many fishies they can kiss, just like. But again, understand that. Then our goals, the audience. We got to meet the responsibilities of like how we are absorbing the information. Then we also got to continue on with evaluating the performance of the information of the media. I say information just as a way to say, look, it's the media. The media that we are consuming as consumers is information, be it entertainment, be it informative news, blah, blah, blah fish i don't I, I ignore ignore the dumb things here look white boy <gasps> oh dog 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 thank you thank you see it's like jingling keys all of you all of you have adhd look at the keys so you have to understand that when they do release their product their media you also have to understand that they're also charting the motives for why we choose what we do and use what we use. But <sighs> we have to understand that. We need to know why we choose and use what we choose and use. Then afterwards, we uncover the meaning. We interpret every piece of media differently, and that's just how it is. But it's kind of self-explanatory. Then we got to always respect the context that the media is produced in. Be it like Transformers, for example. It was a cartoon show that was based in the 80s during an energy crisis. And that gets the context of the energy crisis into the storyline. It is a public concern. Shut up, Apple Watch. But again, then we we basically come to understand that the audience, the media, we're very toxic. We're we're like um uh th we're we're that one chick that's like with a really toxic person, but then they're also very toxic to that person, and then it's like yeah. But again, don't worry. Just look at white boy on the screen. Look at him. He is so small. But we also need to understand that the media will pose a few problems regarding public concern. The types of media and how they can be seen as addictive. Social media, video games are common perpetrators. Social atomization. I know how to speak English. Social atomization is another point of concern. This is when we stop seeing other people as real people. And it's very common with famous TV, media personalities, you know, that like parasocial connection you have to someone. And it's this idea that they aren't real. Like how paparazzi will harass people at their homes. It's weird, dude. But don't worry, don't worry. We also need to understand that we can be active and passive regarding how we choose our media. Active considered good, passive is bad. Active or quote unquote lean forward media used in a way that would basically be saying computers, mobile devices, internet, all interactive media platforms. But if we're gonna be passive, kind of kick back, 
have like some dino nuggies, chalky milk, you know. And these media types are the TV, movies, radio. You're absorbing it, but not interacting with it. And then we kind of understand that the original audience, it's also going to expand upon that or its audience, how it's defined, like fans or fandoms of Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Supernatural, um, Lord of the Rings, Doctor Who, Harry Potter, um, Friends? Ew, The Office, gross. But we have to understand that the gratification set is important for audience. It's an important concept. Tells us that the audience has a choice regarding the media it decides to consume over time due to the many possibilities to choose. To choose. We have such an insane amount of possibilities to choose from that as an audience member, the media preference will form and reform based on factors such as media related interests, needs and other preferences. Something else that should be mentioned is taste culture. And the audience is formed based on similar interests opposed to locality or social background. And there's a whole lot of other topics that can be really discussed in this. And alongside that, you want to know something? We could understand the main traditions of research such as structural, behavioral, socio-cultural, and it's like... The structural, the main aim is how to describe the composition, enumerate, relate it to society and how society is. But then we can understand it a little bit better with a more in-depth view, such as through the behavioral lens. And we explain, predict, choices, reactions, and effects of what that does. Then we understand the cultural things the meaning of the content and the use in context, which is always good. But the main data, such as with the structural one, would be a social demographic media and time of being used. The behavioral data would be the motives, acts of choice, reactions. The cultural data would be the perceptions of meaning, social, cultural context, blah, 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 blah. Then the main methods of how we get this, surveying, stat analysis, and it's a lot of surveying, experimentation, mental measurement, especially in the behavioral part. Then in cultural, we'd get really ethnographic and qualitative rather than quantitative, which does lead to some issues of like being objective about this stuff. But again, it's not that bad. And... I kind of want to expand on this because media itself is a tool that a lot of people want to either enrich themselves in or entertain themselves in, be it they entertain themselves by entertaining others. And the audience is something that is seen as this force that we receive feedback from. Now, we could always make the argument that cancel culture is when the audience um, does not approve of the entertainment or the media, but that's a whole other thing that I'm not educated on yet, and I'm just kind of being a little dude and vibing. <laughs> but, yeah, if I missed anything, please do let me know, and uh, remember... Look at this video of White Boy when he was a tiny, tiny little puppy. And remember, give me a good grade and my group mates a good grade because White Boy will cry if he doesn't get a good grade. Bye!